Bitcoin and blockchain, future currency and transactional system of the world, or just a fad that's fizzling out. So Bitcoin is a cryptocurrency that was invented in 2009. The key things to know about it as a new kind of currency is that it completely eliminates middlemen. So there's no bankers or, or any kind of transaction um, fees that happen for uh, to facilitate a transaction. It can also be used completely anonymously and it uses an underlying technology called the blockchain. So the person that invented both the blockchain and Bitcoin uh, went under the alias Satoshi Nakamoto and even by the standards of someone that posted anonymously in a cryptography forum uh, online in 2009, he was a very reclusive and uh, secretive person and as Bitcoin kind of took off and got more popular, he actually ended up just completely disappearing off the face of the earth, so no one really knows who actually invented Bitcoin. Bitcoins aren't minted or printed. They are um, actually, they come into creation by being mined by computers that are connected to the blockchain system. So there's this very complex uh, algorithm that creates Bitcoins at this constant rate and then distributes them to the people that are connected to the blockchain as they solve these uh, complex math problems. Once you are awarded a Bitcoin, you can store it in what's called a digital wallet. And basically that means that you have some digital information that you are responsible for keeping safe. So people want these obviously because they are anonymous, because they eliminate transaction fees, they make international deals a lot more uh, easy to facilitate. And I think it's interesting this idea that they're not dependent on states that have to regulate currency. When Bitcoin was getting popular in 2009, you can see why this was really on people's mind. The economy was really collapsing uh, in a lot of ways, and people were rightly blaming the existing system of financiers and governments um, for kind of manipulating or failing to be able to manipulate and protect the economy. So the value of Bitcoin really started exploding, and then for some reasons that we're about to look at, it ran into some problems and it really dipped off, and now it's kind of coming back. So the first problem was just the, by the very nature of Bitcoin, the more people that are mining it at once, the worse all those people are going to do. People would build these crazy expensive mining rigs, and as the kind of uh, the gold rush started on Bitcoin, uh, all these people were basically paying more in electrical uh, bills and in hardware costs than they were able to recoup from Bitcoin. So then it would start these boom bust cycles where everyone would, you know, build all these rigs, and then later they would just end up all selling them off. Also, no one really knew how to keep their digital wallets safe or what to do with them. You'll see these stories in the news about someone who accidentally lost the hard drive and then is trying to recover seven and a half million dollars in bitcoins from the dump. Also, uh, since bitcoins are totally anonymous, they really became associated with some black market activities on the dark web. So drugs, guns, other kinds of unsavory things, and that probably scared off a lot of legitimate investors. Basically, this idea that there's no guarantors, there's no, uh, there's no one to really be the middleman in these transactions, I think is what holding, is what's holding Bitcoin back in a lot of ways. So Bitcoin faces this really uncertain future. No one even really knows how many people are using it because of the kind of uh, hard to decipher nature of of uh, who's using it at any one time. You don't really know their identities. And um, there are about $15 billion of Bitcoin in circulation right now, but depending on the worth and the valuation, that could go way up or way down. I think the really interesting thing about this is actually the blockchain. So the blockchain is the technology that allows Bitcoins to exist, and what it is is a digital ledger in which the transactions made in Bitcoin are recorded in this distributed ledger um, that exists actually across a bunch of different computers, not in any one place. And this is a quote from an article I took from Harvard Business Review. And basically what they're saying is they don't see it as this sort of disruptive technology that's going to come in and replace a bunch of industries all at once, but rather that it's going to end up being the system that just everyone uses for every type of record keeping or transaction keeping uh, in the world. And eventually they foresee this eliminating the need for things like lawyers and brokers and for all these organizations and algorithms and machines to have this very low friction ability to uh, have transactions back and forth. So it's definitely interesting to think about it eliminating all these white collar jobs and um, 
and really just kind of changing the way our economy works. Could it be a good thing? Could it be a bad thing? We'll have to wait and see.